Hi. Hello and good day everyone. Welcome to Business Writing ENL 3.10. Um you guys are with me Miss Farah. First of all, FYI, <laughs> this is my second time recording this and it was so silly because um I don't know why the one that I recorded before um I mean there's no audio of it. So I hope that this turns out well. So my apologies if I do sound a bit tired because I have recorded this before. And yeah, so basically I'm repeating myself once again. Uh, but no issues, no worries. So um, you guys are in week one. Um, I have a an important announcement. There has been a slight change on how our classes are going to be in this semester. Uh, but since I have already started with the recording and stuff, I shall be talking more about it um, during our consultation time on Thursday. Okay, so don't worry about it. Um, so, how are you guys feeling today? Hi. <laughs> so, how are you guys feeling? Um, so, how is how was your first how was your first classes? I guess uh, some of you guys hopefully have been through um, classes. Um, for June 2020, I hope that you guys are enjoying yourself in this um, online classroom. So, um, like my style, um, before I start my class, every single um, my uh, every single of my classes. Okay, so sorry. So every single time I start my class, I would always remind my students on their assignments and also their tests. So this is very, very important because these are the things that will help you to get marks for your, I mean, grade for your ENL 3410. Okay, so this um, figure, I guess, um, illustrates how your semester is going to be for ENL 3410. Um, your first counted assessment, if you can say it, uh, your first assi assignment or assessment that will be Counted for your CTPA for your NL triple one zero would be um test one and that is fifteen percent of your um course marks and it will be on Thursday eighteen of June at ten a.m. So I need you to inform me if you have any you know trouble with your internet and stuff like that. So if you have any issues and you cannot you know complete or you cannot do your test during this time and also for the second test. Please do inform me in advance so that I can reschedule another test for you guys and I will try to accommodate for your circumstances. All right, so um, in week four, uh, week four, we're going to start um, talking about our um, group assignment. And the reason why I'm, you know, emphasizing and I'm, I wanted to start um, your group project as early as possible is because that is 50% of your course marks. So I have had cases where um, students who did very well for their report and also presentation and they got the marks that they deserve and I really very much want to help you guys to pass this course or if you guys are aiming for A um, and if you deserve to get an A, I, I have no problem of giving you the marks that you deserve. Okay, so um, that is why I want you guys to start looking for your group members to do your group project. Now, some of you guys might be new and some of you guys might not know each other. So that should be no problem because we shall be discussing more about it in our WhatsApp group, uh, which is why we created the WhatsApp group at first place. Okay, so I shall be having a clear and hopefully giving you guys a bit of communication in the WhatsApp and you guys can simply, uh, you know, choose your group in there and hopefully you will be able to execute and also do well for your um, group assignment and also oral presentation that is due in the final week of this semester, which is in week six. So one of the challenges of having a June session or short semester is that um, all of the 14 worth of syllabus and also lessons are now compressed into one uh, into seven, seven weeks only. So you guys don't really have a lot of time and you have to you know do a lot of things okay so that is um something that is expected for you guys so please uh, do be aware on these assessments um this table is basically the same information as before 
but I reckon uh, uh, it's a bit more clearer. So just a reminder once again that you guys do have a final exam and that is 40%. Now, I just also want to kindly remind you guys as well on your attendance. So if you guys um, do not complete the um, online tasks, so if you do not go online and log into your Blackboard, if you haven't watched any of the online lectures, um, I had to you know, consider you as absent. So the consequence of it is that um, in order for you to be able to sit for your final exam, you need 80%, at least 80% of your um, attendance. And 80% is quite a lot. So please make sure that, you know, you organize your time wisely so that you should have no problem to sit for your final exam. Okay. I also want to make a bit of a disclaimer. Um, the barring list, the, so if you do not, if you do not get um, enough attendance, I mean, your attendance is below 80%. Your faculty will be the one who will be giving you guys the barring letter. So basically, what I'm saying is that it's a consequence of your own action, but eventually your faculty is the one who sent out the barring letter. So it's not me, it's automatic from your attendance. Okay, so just a disclaimer. All right, so I really don't want you guys to be getting the uh, barring letter because I think that you guys um, should do well and should pass this course. All right. So this is the grading list, and according to what you guys aim for um, for this um, ENL triple one zero, it really depends on you. If you want to get a, as you can see here, it's quite sli slightly easy because if you um, overall your course. You know your coursework and also your final exam in total if you can get more than 75 it means that you can get a minus so as compared to maybe spm you need to get at least 80 to get in, an a minus so uh when it comes to this um this is one of the advantages i guess so you can target to get an a i mean to me i think it's quite possible a minus but um, I also want to remind you guys as well that you need to get um, above 50, above 50 in order for you to pass this course. So as compared to other universities, I guess, um, I mean, I think NT was quite straight when it comes to passing rates. So please make sure that you pass this course and make sure, most importantly, make sure that, you know, you inform me if you are unable to sit for any of these assessments. So, for instance, something happened in week three and you don't have the access to the internet and it's already week four. So, please do inform me even if the um, assessment has been passed. Okay, like for um, like you do not do your test one and it's week four. Just email me and I try my best to try and accommodate to you if you have the valid reason. Okay, all right. So please remember, I'm not a monster. I'm here to help you guys. If you show me um, that you have good attitudes and you really want to learn, um, I have no trouble with that. Okay, so um, I just want to congratulate you guys for graduating <laughs> from the grammar part of the course. So if you guys noticed in previous video, I talk a lot about grammar. I was so heavy with grammar and I feel so sorry for you guys. but still it has to be done and you have done it so very good well done guys congratulations um i think because um the video was so grammar oriented i feel like it's important for us to recap back on the grammar parts and that is why uh on thursday 10 a.m i would like to do a bit of recap session and we try to be as engaging as possible and I try to make it a bit more interesting with you guys so that um, you guys will be able to understand the grammar rules, if you can say it better. Okay, so do not worry if you feel like there are some questions and issues that is a bit, you know, hard for you to understand from previous video. Please do save the questions and then we shall, uh, I shall try and explain it better in our consultation time. Cool? 
So what we're going to do in this video is that uh, we want to discuss about structure of an essay. Um, in particular, we shall be um, discussing about TC statement, topic sentences, and also supporting details. Now, these are very, very important because uh, in future, I mean, like after you're done with this course, uh, you guys will have to, you guys have to um, write a lot of, you know, reports and maybe your faculty would need you guys to, you know, complete some assignments and stuff. And some of um, the complaints, not really complaints, some of the issues that we received is that uh, some of the students do not have adequate or enough English language in order for them to complete the report and also assignments. So having said that, we take that into account and we try our best to accommodate and to actually teach you guys this is how it should be done. Okay, right. So uh, in this course, you guys shall be learning uh, two types of essays, which are illustrative essay and also cause and effect essay. Um, in today's class, um, in today's video, I shall only be touching on the general structure of any kind of essay. So both of these essays would have the same structure in a way that they are all five paragraphs, yada, yada, yada. But in you know, different types of essays would have different approaches and different ways of writing it. But the main structure will be the same, which is why I'm just going to briefly introduce you guys to the structure of the essay. So I'll be touching or I'll be talking more about illustrative essay and also cause and effect essay um, next week. So. Let's take a look at the structure of an essay. So when I say structure of an essay, I am referring to the conventional way of academic style. Yeah. So generally, okay, generally, in the conventional way of um, writing an academic essay, you would need to write five paragraphs. So one single essay that you submit to your teacher, to your instructor, to your lecturer, would need you to write at least five paragraphs okay in each five paragraphs okay uh, it also represented by the first paragraph which is something that we call an introduction okay it's um, a paragraph and then you would have a body sorry three body paragraphs three body paragraphs and lastly you need one conclusion or concluding paragraph okay so um, this is basically an analogy of how your essay should look like, like a machine. Okay, um, so this um, inverted triangle, if you can see it here, this triangle represents the first paragraph, which is the introduction or introductory paragraph. Whereas these um, three rectangle, blue rectangles, if you can see it, represent the three main body paragraphs. And lastly, you have like a normal triangle here, and that represents the uh, concluding paragraph or conclusion. All right? So if you notice, if you notice in the introduction, the triangle is inverted. It's the other way around, right? So the idea of it is to show you guys that when you write your introduction, you should go from general. So it's a larger, um, it's a larger space here to indicate that it's general into a bit more specific something that we call a DC statement. So the most general part of your introduction, which um, the last sentence of your introduction, should be a DC statement. Okay. So DC statement is the last sentence of your introduction. Or introductory um, paragraph, and I shall be talking about your TC statement in a bit. Okay, so in the next following paragraph are main body one, main body two, and also main body three. And in your concluding paragraph, it's the opposite of your introduction. It has the same um, style, it has the same shape, which is a triangle, but the approach to conclusion or concluding paragraph it's for you to go from general 
to the most specific sorry the most specific to the most general of it okay so basically uh what i'm saying is that introduction and also conclusion has the opposite way of you know writing uh introduction you go from general to specific whereas in your conclusion you go from specific to general okay now um this is also another scary diagram if you can say it so um this is basically trying to illustrate um this one okay but in a much more easier table if you can say it this is how i would illustrate um, any conventional essays right so you would need five different paragraphs as i see it uh, here you have one introduction so only one paragraph here one introduction so you have one two three three paragraphs or main body three main body paragraphs and lastly you would have a concluding paragraph or also sometimes we call it as conclusion very often we call it as conclusion okay so paragraph consists of between um maybe 100 to 200 words 200 words i guess 200 words and uh, it may have um at least five sentences for main body paragraphs okay so in your introduction in your introduction now this is uh, what i'm going to refer as the structure of an essay okay so this is what i call as the structure of an essay so regardless if you are doing an illustrative essay or even a cause and effect essay this is how your essay will look like you would have to have um hook as the first sentence of your introduction and your final sentence of your introduction would need a thesis statement so regardless of any type of essays, all of these essays will eventually have the same flow. All right. So in your introduction, very often in the first sentence or maybe two sentences, first to two sentences, um, you would need a hook. What is a hook? Hook is basically one or two um, lines or sentences that you're trying to write in order to get your reader's attention. Now, have you heard about the phrase, you know, first impression matters? Something like that. So you want to hook your audience. You want to hook your readers by having them read the whole essay from your first sentence itself. How do you do hook? There are three ways of doing hook. First is for you to ask a question. Second is by you um, giving a statistic, relevant statistic. Back. and third is by quoting somebody uh i shall be talking more about these techniques as we progress um in the different types of essays don't worry about it um right after hook you would need one or two sentences depending on you okay depending on you you might need one or two sentences to link between your hook and also your thesis statement you're basically building some context and also some background information so that people can actually understand the topic better and try to link from your hook with your thesis statement so remember we have our inverted triangle just now so your hook has to be very general and then your thesis statement is something that is very very specific now why is it specific it's because in your TT statement, it should summarize your main body one, main body two, and also main body three. A TC statement has to be written in one single sentence only. Okay, so in one single sentence, you need to summarize uh, the main bodies, uh, sorry, the main ideas in main body one, main body two, and also main body three. Uh, moving on in each of the main body paragraphs now if you see here it has the same flow or structure so the first sentence of your main body paragraph should always 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 be the topic sentence then you would need three supporting details and lastly one concluding sentence to basically summarize again your whole paragraph 
And lastly, in your concluding paragraph conclusion, the first sentence of your concluding paragraph is a restate of the C statement. Now, because I don't want you guys to get confused, some people would call it as concluding statement. Um, because I don't want you guys to get confused between concluding statement and also concluding sentence, which is in your main body paragraphs. So I call it as restate of the C statement. Basically, it has the same role. And if you remember now, we have the normal triangle here and we're going from specific to general. We are trying, uh, I mean, the same function of restate of the C statement, basically recapping again on your main body one, main body two, and also main body three. Then similar to building sentences, you also need to basically have one or two sentences to link between your restate of the C statement with your final sentence, which is a, an opinion, recommendation, advice, or suggestions of the topic. Okay, so I think as we progress along this semester, I shall be giving you guys um, some more examples so it's much more evident for you guys. So let's move on now to talking about the C statement. Now, can you guys tell me where can we find a TC statement? So a TC statement can be found in the first paragraph, which is the introduction, and it is the last sentence of your introduction. So a TC statement is done to show your audience, to show your reader, readers the purpose of you writing the essay. So basically, it has to summarize all of the main points of your body one, body two, and body three, which is why it's very, very specific because it depends on this essay itself, what you want to talk about. Um, it outlines all arguments and ideas in the essay, as I mentioned. And the most important thing about um, TC statement that it has to maintain a parallel structure. Now, we touched about parallel structure in our previous video. Uh, which is, uh, if you remember, Princess Diana uh, was a beautiful, blah, 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 and influential figure. So basically, having said that you use the same uh, parts of speech, if you, you know, you want to describe a person, you might want to use adjective, adjective, and adjective, just to maintain a parallel structure. All right. Now, how do you write a C statement? In order for you to write a TC statement, you need three different things. The first one, what is the topic that we are discussing? Secondly, your controlling idea. So a controlling idea basically means if you agree, disagreeing, or what's your opinion about this? And lastly, you would need three supporting ideas. As I mentioned, these three supporting ideas are derived from your main body one, here, main body two, and also main body tree. Okay, so let's have a look at an example. So here we have a topic: Should robots replace um, human professions in future? So this is uh, the topic that we want to discuss about today, or you have to you know write about today. Should robot replace human profession in future? Now, if you look at the three. Um, required elements of a TC statement, you need a topic. So basically, you know that in your um, TC statement, you should briefly or have a bit of a gist on the topic, which is talking about robot replacing human jobs. Okay. Now, let's have a look at this example of a TC statement and see if this TC statement has all three elements. So, robots should not replace human jobs in future, uh, sorry, in any time. In future, anytime in, sorry, this is an error here. Robots should not replace human pro human jobs in any time in future as it can increase the unemployment rate, threaten the economy, and induce social problems. Now, can you see if there is any topic, any way that is just mentioning about should robot replace human profession in future? Yes. So as you can see here, this is basically um, talking a gist of, uh, you know, the topic robots should not replace human jobs in future. So this is something 
that is almost similar to uh, the question, which is should robot replace human profession in future? So maybe this author just be a little bit creative in a way that, you know, try to use synonyms instead of, you know, saying professions. Um, this author is using a different word, which is job, which is quite good. It shows that this um, person is actually understanding what the question wants. Now, secondly, does it have a controlling idea? Yes, it does have a controlling idea in a way that it says should not. So this person is disagreeing with the topic uh, or with the question that is uh, should robot replace human jobs in the future? And lastly, um, does this DC statement has um, three controlling ideas? Yes, it does. So the first controlling idea is that increasing the number of unemployment rate. And the second one is strengthening the economy. And last, the third supporting detail, sorry, supporting idea is um, inducing social problem. Okay, so um, this is a good DC statement because it has all three elements. Now let's take a look at you know some more uh, other examples. So in future you shall be learning into illustrative essay and also cause and effect essay. Now this is just um another example I guess. This is for an illustrative essay. I should I shall be talking more about these specific um types of essays uh, next week. But this is just an example. So here a good com a good computer should have the latest graphic card, the latest processor, so that it can support high end gaming. So basically, it has all three main points. It has the topic. Uh, the topic that we're discussing and also the controlling idea should have the great latest graphic card. So same goes with the second um, topic, sorry, the C statement here. What are the effects of water pollution in ocean life? So the effects of uh, water pollution in ocean life are destruction of equi aquatic ecosystem, extinction of coral reef, and also extinction of sea creatures. So basically three points are mentioned. It has the topic, it has the controlling idea. Now, a lot of students, um, the main problem that they did in their tests um, is that they did not provide three supporting uh, ideas. Okay, so they do not provide three supporting ideas. Automatically, you don't deserve to get good marks and also high grades because uh, TC statement should have three supporting ideas okay now um, let's jump into the outline and writing a complete paragraph so um, having said that this is the structure of our essay now just now we talk about the C statement now we want to focus more on the main body paragraph here so we want to focus on here by talking more on topic sentences and supporting details okay when we talk about essay outline or paragraph outline it should always look like this okay so these things are basically the same thing derived from this structure all right and in order for you to create a very wonderful and very nice uh, paragraph is uh, an analogy of it maybe is you know having to prepare uh, a set of burger okay so in order for you to have like a burger um, you would need a top bun so this top bun is something that is similar to your topic sentence it's like the opening of it then um, to make it a bit more juicy and having the compulsory or required element of a burger are definitely some meat like the patty some lettuce like you know to make it uh you know that like that is how normally people would put in your burger right like some tomatoes some lettuce so these are important important things that you want to write in your supporting details okay so it's like an illustration of this 
obviously you don't stop there because um you want to make it a bit more you know nicer by putting more condiments like like you want to put some mustard you want to put some ketchup you want to put some relish come on we're malaysian we're gonna put chili sauce there right right <laughs> so it's not just me yeah you want to put something you know spicy in there and then and that is how you can add more flavor to your paragraph you can say it by adding more vocabularies you know high um like very extensive vocabulary very colorful vocabulary and lastly you want to close your paragraph with another bottom bun which is something that we can you know compare with a concluding sentence just to make a very wonderful paragraph. Right, so now, um, in order for you to create one single paragraph, you need uh, a topic sentence, three supporting details, and also you need to close it with one concluding statement. All right, so basically topic sentence is just showing you guys on the objective of the paragraph or stressing on the main idea of that single paragraph then the use of your supporting detail is basically providing explanation examples and even statistics or facts to support your main idea or going back to your topic sentence okay and lastly concluding statement is basically summarizing back recapping back on the main idea of the whole paragraph itself so i always uh when i teach my students on how to do topic sentence i always tell them to go straight forward and you know to go just basically straight forward so that you can make it very very clear unless that you have quite good english grammar and english sort of like have a good hang of your English, basically. If you are talented in English, um, I would really, really recommend you to explore your language using a bit more higher, you know, higher level of vocabulary and things like that. You can explore more about it. But if you feel that, if you feel that um, you want to get things right and you want to avoid doing mistakes, you can just simply go straight forward and then just um, straight to the point. So an example of a very simplified version of a topic sentence here is this. First, the primary cause of cities becoming so crowded is the economy. So from here, I learned that um, the topic that we're discussing here is the, the causes of city becoming crowded. So in one single paragraph, you have to remember that you can only mention one point. Okay. So please remember in one single main body paragraph, only focus on one single point. So here, obviously, there is only one point that is going to be mentioned in this uh, first main body paragraph. And from here, I learned that the main point or main idea that this paragraph will be is the economy. Okay. Now let's take a look into how you can link from your TC statement into making topic sentences. So just now I talked, I mentioned to you guys that a TC statement is a derived or is a summary of your topic sentences. Yeah. So basically, uh, in order for you to create your topic sentences, you can um, derive it from your uh, TC statement. So here we have three different points. Uh, in your TC statement. So as I mentioned, you know, reading from this TC statement, I would be able to foreshadow or I am imagining, I'm expecting to see that in my, in my first main body paragraph, I should be talking about latest graphic card. In my second main body paragraph, I should be talking about latest processor. And in my third main body paragraph, I should be talking about a supporting high end game. Okay, so how can you take all of these into different topic sentences by doing this? Okay, so first and foremost, a good computer requires the latest graphic card in its system. Basically, taking the main point from here and creating a topic sentence. Do you see that? 
And then in my second topic sentence, I would need to derive and I would need to extract the second um, point from the TC statement into this topic sentence. To support the graphic card, a good computer will also require the latest processor to run its system. And last but not least, a good computer should also be able to support high-end gaming with the latest graphic cards and processors installed. All right. So to me, um, these topic sentences are quite good in a sense that it has a linking words, it has a bit of conjunction, and it links back to previous topic sentences as well. Okay. But as I mentioned, a topic sentence can be a bit more simple. Yeah, like this. From this topic sentence, sorry, from this CC statement, you can also just simplify things um, by saying, firstly, a good computer requires the latest graphic card. Secondly, a good computer will also require the latest processor. Last but not least, a good computer should also be able to support high end gaming. Okay, so if your English is very good and you want to, you know, explore with your language, I highly recommend you to use, you know, you can try and do something a bit more complex like this. You know, you add a bit of linking words and then you want to link from this one with another one. But if you feel that um, you just want to get things right and you want to focus on, you know, getting organized and things like that, another alternative would have a very, you know, simple version of your topic sentence. So both ways are also good depending on your level and depending on what you want. Okay. Now, um, in your paragraph, obviously, you would need to write a topic sentence, supporting details, and also concluding statement. Now, let's take a look into how to write supporting details. Now, I want you to pause this video. And from this one single paragraph here, this is um, an example of first main body paragraph. How do I know this is first main body paragraph? Because of the word first here. Smart. Okay, so I want you to pause this video and I want you to try to uh, deconstruct this whole single paragraph into the different structures of a main body paragraph. Can you try to do it? Okay, can you do it now? Thank you. Okay, now I'm assuming that you have paused and you have attempted to uh, deconstruct this whole paragraph into different um, rows that it has in the structure. So if you manage to do that, um, it would be something like this. So the first sentence has always been, um, or it needs to be a topic sentence. So as I mentioned, this topic sentence is very easy and it's very straightforward. It just looks into the primary cause of cities becoming crowded is the economy. So it's very straightforward. I like it. Um, and it has a bit of a uh, linking word here. Um, it has um, first. So the next sentences are supporting details. Okay. So supporting details sometimes can be written in one single sentence. Sometimes it could be more than one sentence at what we have in supporting details tree here. Sometimes one single sentence do not do justice in it. How do you do supporting details? I'll be talking more about it in a bit. But just briefly, um, there are three ways of doing uh, supporting details. First is by giving example. Second is by giving explanation of um, the main idea. And last, you can add statistics or facts in order for you to provide the details of the main idea. Okay, so basically, if we were to break down these supporting details, now, please remember, these supporting details need to always talk about the main idea of the topic. And from this paragraph, it has to go and support economy. Okay, so if we look at the first supporting detail here, as the, as the country develops, its cities becomes engines of development thus jobs are available in these areas so basically it's providing some explanation into how economy is actually helping in cities to become crowded uh, and then here frankfurt istanbul Bombay, and also 
Sao Paulo or the economic census of the country. So now here, the second supporting details um, is also giving a bit more an example of some of the main cities that provides jobs uh, because um, the economy is helping them. Okay, And here, obviously, is also one another example, but this example is a bit longer. For example, Tokyo was a motor of Japan's rapid economic development in 1960s and the 70s. As a result, it has its pollution increased rapidly. People moved in Tokyo because they could find an employment, sorry, employment and establish economic security for themselves and their families there. So as you can see here, this is an example of how you do um, an example as your supporting details. And I shall be talking more about extended and hypothetical example in um, in illustrative essay where sometimes sometimes when you want to give example you need more than one sentence yeah and you can do that okay uh but this is just some brief example of supporting detail giving by giving an example sometimes sometimes in one single paragraph you can give explanation and you can give two examples or sometimes you want to put explanation example and facts fine however you want to do it but i will highly recommend you guys to make it variety by putting maybe two explanation one examples or one example is two explanation or you want to give one each so i'm um, try to make it variety in other ways okay and here is the concluding sentence is the final um sentence to basically um recap again or, or just basically emphasize again on the main point of this whole paragraph which is talking about the economy okay the whole idea of having this structured uh, flow is just to ensure that you will not go off track okay so if you are able to give us um you know link from supporting the one going back to the topic sentence you won't have any trouble of you know not answering the question okay so um let's talk about supporting details you can put your you have to put your supporting details in your body paragraphs um they are the second third and fourth sentences in your main body paragraphs So basically, um, supporting details provide um, explanation, facts, or statistics, and examples. So please remember there are three ways of doing supporting details, which are explanation, facts, or statistics, and also examples to develop and support your main idea of your whole paragraph. Now, sometimes um, supporting details also answer your WH questions. Okay, who, what, when, why. Now, can you look at this um, topic here? We have a topic sentence that says, um, students can overcome stress by listening to music. So the role of it, uh, the role of supporting detail is basically you have to link back and show how does it, listen to music can um, be over, I mean, can help you to overcome stress, can help students to overcome stress. Can you pause this video? and tell me which one is not a suitable supporting detail. Can you try to do this? All right, I hope you have done this. Um, now, which one is not a good supporting detail? Can you guess? The answer is D. So why is it D? So here, um, the problem with D is that it does not indicate or it does not give explanation, it does not give example on how students can overcome their stress by listening to music. Instead, this supporting detail is talking about downloading music from the internet. So it's slightly off the topic. It talks about music and internet. I mean, it's talking about music, but it does not give explanation or example onto how students can overcome stress do you get it so you have to be very very careful uh, to make sure that your supporting detail is providing 
or it's providing explanation to your topic sentence. Now, if we look at A, B, C, E, F, and G, all of these are actually providing explanation or how or providing procedures or basically giving us more details into how music can help students to overcome stress. And this is something that I want you guys to be doing in your um, essays. Okay? So, all right. So, I have uh, I have uploaded a special, just a short one, like I think like three to five minutes, um, tips video uh, on YouTube. And I have given the link to you guys on your Blackboard uh, to basically share with you guys how you can edit and how you can create a bit more creative uh, with your blog post for your online task. So if you look at your blackboard, you would notice that your task for this week is for you to introduce yourself using a blog uh, feature on your blackboard. Uh, now I want you to introduce yourself, but I want to make it, I want to help you guys to, you know, revamp your blackboard skills, if you can see it. So I prepared like a very short um, tutorial video to help you guys with that task or assignment. Okay. So I hope that is helpful. Maybe some of you guys have done it and maybe some of you guys know about it. So just consider it as like a recapping session for you guys. Okay. So I also want to, as I mentioned, um, the previous video, we talked about a lot of grammar oriented stuff. And I think it can be slightly overwhelming and slightly harder to grasp as well. So we're going to have a live uh, session consultation on Thursday to basically recap again on what we have learned this week. So if you have some questions, uh, whether from last video or this video, you can keep it and ask me the questions during the live consultation. Okay, so please remember this consultation is not compulsory, but it would definitely, definitely, definitely help you in your learning. So I really highly recommend you to join this consultation. Okay. If you're not able to make it to this session, please do and watch the recording because I shall be recording the session um, so that you guys won't miss out on anything. Um, and also that will serve as your attendance as well. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. Um, I hope that you guys are doing okay, doing well. If you have any trouble, please just hit me up on WhatsApp group or um, if you want, you can email me. Okay, so thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you.